What if I told you there's a hidden danger lurking in every grooming salon all across the country? Say what? No, it's not sharp scissors, stripping knives, or even grinders. The danger is something much less noticeable and something benign even. It's mixing bottles. I'm sure you're asking yourself, how can mixing bottles do anything? It's not sharp or inherently dangerous looking. I also like to live dangerously. Well, it's even worse than you can imagine. Are you serious right now, bro? The danger behind it is actually most of the time invisible to the naked eye. But there is good news, and the good news is that dogs are groomed all across the country every day. So with those statistics in mind, it seems like it's not actually that common. However, when it does happen, it's severe and extremely painful for your dog. So what am I actually talking about here? The clinical term for the skin condition that arises from the ever dangerous mixing bottles is called post-grooming furunculosis. And it's essentially a deep bacterial folliculitis. Just as it sounds, it presents around the base of the hair follicle. This inflammation causes bumps, bleeding and crusting, and is often widespread over large areas like their backs, their necks, and sometimes on their tail as well. Along with this, dogs can also present having fevers and being way more lethargic than normal. And most of these symptoms develop within 24 to 48 hours after grooming. The problem here lies that during the grooming process, there's a risk of irritating the hair follicles. And this can either be done by clipping brushing, hand stripping, or even some vigorous scrubbing. This irritation essentially creates an opening for bacteria to enter, which in turn leads to infection. Boo this man! Factors such as improper grooming techniques, dirty equipment, and underlying skin conditions can exasperate the risk. But by far the biggest culprit when it comes to the introduction of bacteria often tends to be mixing bottles. And when you think about it, it's actually kind of a no-brainer. If I only had a brain. Mixing bottles have the tendency to have small itty bitty openings where you can pump shampoo and mix with water, usually about the size of a finger or two. Disinfecting inside can be extremely difficult. And although you can use a diluted bleach mixture to sanitize it, think about it this way. It's the same type of film that grows on a bathtub, and some of those growths, as we talked about, can be invisible. But it's possible you may have also noticed like a reddish color film as well. That's kind of the same idea. Now, if you were to spray bleach on it and then rinse it, it would be unlikely to truly get it all off. Not in the same way that scrubbing it would, right? Well, same thing goes for shampoo mixing bottles. The film that grows or can grow inside is the same that you find in areas like bathtubs or really consistently wet and warm environments. And in most cases, it can be impossible to clean this film off from the inside of the mixing bottles. Once this bacteria forms and you have a dog who may have irritated skin and you apply the shampoo directly to that spot and then it gets thoroughly scrubbed in right down to the follicles. See where I'm going with this? So the question is, how can you prevent this? Well, let's start at the basics. Mix your products as per label instructions. Uh, there are different dilution rates for different shampoos. So make sure you follow those guidelines. Some are a little bit more lenient than others. So just take that and do what the label says. That's Step number one. Step two, dilute and mix shampoos and rinses on the day that they are used. Do not save any leftovers at the end of a workday. And if it's possible, even rinse out bottles between dogs. If you are a pet parent who uses self-serve stations and they use mixing bottles there, just bring your own shampoo instead. That's gonna be way easier to keep track. You won't know when they clean their bottles or how often they do so. Now, if you are a groomer or a pet parent who instead of self-serve grooms at home, invest in a shampoo foaming nozzle or a recirculating bathing system as these are easier to disinfect and allow shampoo to be used for each pet one at a time. And this prevents any sort of stagnation. 
And in my professional opinion, I find nozzles are easier to take apart, clean and disinfect over a recirculating bathing system. I just find those a little bit harder and you should be taking them apart, rinsing them out and sanitizing them every night, which can be a lot of work. Oh, great, you're home. Sanitize your mixing bottles with a diluted bleach solution at the end of each night as well. Use a 10% ratio of bleach to water and let it soak for 10 minutes before rinsing. If possible, use a bottle scrub brush as well and tilt them upside down and leave them to dry overnight. Now, if this all seems like too much work for you, you can, as an alternative, use an old squeezable sports drink bottle. Gatorade. H2O. And that's because the openings on those are a whole lot larger, making it much easier to clean. So it's just an option if you wanna stick with the mixing bottles and you wanna do less work. Otherwise, always clean and disinfect any grooming tools between clients, or if it's after your pets have been groomed, take the opportunity to sanitize your gear after you've finished. So that goes for at home pet parents as well. And this includes your tub as well. Make sure you clean it, scrub it down at the end of each day and make sure you're thorough. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you've heard of ronculosis before and if you have any tips and tricks of your own. But if you think you have heard everything when it comes to ear cleaning, I get pretty opinionated in this video here <gasps> on why you actually might be the cause of ear infections and you're not actually preventing them. And Trust me, you gotta hear me out.